Hey, what's going on, Rattler? So if you click that link thinking that this is just going to be clickbait, it's not. I don't do clickbait, I'm, you know, unless I do. But anyway, I am over here once again at Ryan Dollins and uh, Ryan's Reptile Outpost is the name of his company, and he works with some amazing crested geckos and lychees and other New Caledonia geckos. But a couple of years ago, I was over here filming with Ryan and he had just started to develop a brand new morph of crested gecko a couple of years ago. So I wanted to come back now, two years later, to see how this new morph of crested gecko is shaping up. Ryan is calling this new morph the Dolan Dark Line and wait until you guys see these crested geckos because they really do live up to their name. I'm Dave Kaufman and these are my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. All right, Ryan Dolan once again. And now the last time I was over here, all of this was in an upstairs room. This is a brand new herp room down here. But last time I was here, which was a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. You showed me babies of the new dark morph of crested gecko that you have developed. Kind of fill us up to date on, you know, from that last time I was over here to where we are now. Started with an oops baby, something I never would have thought twice about. Brought it to a show and it was a hit. So at that point I kept one back and started breeding that one out. And by the time of the show I had a couple that were looking pretty dark. I had maybe one every other clutch and then i mentioned i was getting more more dark from every clutch now we have it to where it's almost both of them of every clutch from these what i call the doll and dark line we have one of the adults in here this is one of the very i can't remember first or second uh, generation from him but there's one of the adults these guys have so far been been line bred so that means taking one of the the hatchlings and bringing it back to one of the the parents for it uh, and that has given the, the stronger, darker colors to it. Mm -hmm. And then bringing in other, uh, like the Pangea line for charcoal, uh, that's also helped to make sure we're not doing too much inbreeding. Not always the best thing to do it, but Reptile's a little more resilient to that genetically. Currently, he is not fired up. These guys, you, you will definitely be able to tell when they get fired up. Uh, you can see how he's got more grayish, brownish tones to him right now. So for these guys, that is definitely not fired up. Uh, the, you can see some patterns on the dorsal there. When they get fired up, that turns almost completely dark. And I love how the head is a little lighter colored than the body is. It is. That has been consistent with, with all these guys. You'll see some Dalmatian spots in here. That's probably the most prominent. When they're fired down, you can see some. It's not going to be very strong patterns, but you'll see some here. That would be really interesting to get the azanthic line and put it into this to see if you can create a really dark azanthic. Absolutely. That is a great looking guy. All right, so uh, I haven't uh, really looked, but uh, male or female on this guy? This one is a male. That one's a male. It's pretty hard to tell with these guys since they, their scales are so dark. Even with the jeweler's loop I have for sexing, I can be pretty accurate with them. But with these guys, it is easier to grow them up and then it's kind of wait and see right so that has been a big focus of mine there's definitely others you can see here that i've had the pleasure of working with and yeah. trying to define some like quad stripes I, I was focusing on reds for a while because they're absolutely beautiful um, i remember that yep but these have been my my biggest focus all right so how much variability is there from individual to individual so that is what that male looks like let's see another one and see how they compare to each other yeah definitely so his name, by the way, is Toothless. Toothless, okay. Where did that come from? Uh, well, there's this pretty pretty big movie where there's a uh, really dark looking dragon in there. You might have seen it. Uh, How to Train Your Dragon. Never heard of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if we're looking for something like this, let's take a look at, this is Fringilla here. So all of these enclosures here, these are really nice for growing them up when they get too big for a little, uh, little shoe box. So... This, you can see on the walls, maintains the moisture really well. You can see some springtails in here. So you're keeping them bioactive. Correct. Oh, of course she's not fired up. So this is a good example of not fired up. You can see more of the pattern on the side. And you have photos of these fired up on your Instagram, right? Absolutely. Okay, so I'll put that link below. You can check out Ryan's Instagram to see these guys fired up. 
but uh, that looks like a little girl. Sure is. So like I said, this is uh, this is Fringilla. She'll be sticking around here. All of these from the past year will be staying around. Now, have you sold any of this line yet, or are you holding them all back and seeing what comes of it? I will occasionally sell a few off. Uh, it will be to some, some people I've been waiting on a wait list for a very long time or keeping in constant communication mm -hmm. with me. And those are the people I will let them know that, hey, I have one available that I don't plan on keeping and then we'll negotiate on a price. Gotcha, and what uh, kind of ballpark price are we looking at? The, the less dark variation can start around 350 and they go up to weigh about six, 700. Oh, that's not bad at all. So here we have Moira. Oh, of course she's not fired up either. Of course not. But you can see some more of the patterning on her when they're not fired up. But even not fired up, these are pretty impressive looking geckos. Now, I gotta say that out of your entire room here, you've got ball pythons over there, you've got gargoyles behind here, but look at this feature right there. That is the greatest thing that you have <laughs> in your herp room. Look at that. I don't even remember giving that to you. When did I give that to you? You didn't give it to me. You bought it from me? Uh, I didn't buy it from you. Found it on the floor at an expo? I certainly did not find it in the trash can. No, I bought it from you. I was just going to say, um, yeah? <laughs> How did you acquire it? So he, he can see one of the hatchlings. So as hatchlings, they are really dark. Yes. Now, do they always lighten up as adults, or do they? Do you have some adults that stay this dark? Most of the adults do keep their color. That's what's been really nice about this, is they their heads will lighten up, but their bodies still maintain that uh, dark pigment to them. We talked a little bit earlier about, you know, maybe getting an azanthic in here that would go really good with this bloodline, but have you thought about breeding anything else into the bloodline? I have. I have looked into uh, some of the pinstripes I have here. I think that would look phenomenal. I've seen some of Brian Butler's Xanthic pinstripes mm -hmm. uh, for Crescent Geckos. Um, I would love to replicate that with my dark line, but it's, it's a work in progress. Sure. Uh, it does take a little bit of time. So I, we are pairing up right now for that. So hopefully we'll, we'll see some of that in the future. There's going to be a follow-up episode to this follow-up episode. So one of the most important thing as a breeder that I can uh, give some information to anyone else starting out is to set yourself with some sort of ID or identifier for your hatchlings. It makes things a lot more organized. Yep. And if you're more organized, I feel that you can be more successful that way. So sure. with this one, this was the fourth hatchling of 2020. So its ID is uh, 0420. There it is. So I thought Smokey would be an appropriate name. I don't get it. 420 Smokey? I don't... What is that? I'll tell you when you're older. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, hey, hey. There we go. That's all you. Yeah, that's right. I'm just going <laughs> to film him right on my pants. Look at that. So he just jumped right on my pants. Come here, buddy. Come here. Oh, yeah. There you go. Go back to daddy there. <laughs> All right, so uh, now you name, have to name them Smoky Pants. Yes, this one's definitely, you can, you can tell this one's fired up. Again, you can't see any of the patterning on the sides of the dorsal. And you can see the head also too is a little, little lighter. So this one's a little older than the previous one, but still you can see the patterns are not visible when they're fired up. And when you have a crested gecko that's this dark, those eyes just pop. So how many dark morphs do you actually have now? Um, I'd have to count. Uh, currently, I have one row of four behind me, this whole bottom row. Uh, those are all dark. I do have one, two, two pairs right now. So eight, nine, nine, about 11. About so. 11. And last time you had like one or two. Last time I had two. Last uh, time you had two. Okay. Plus the original pairing. So them. this project is really gaining steam. And <laughs> Slowly but surely. Yeah. I love hearing that. Well, we have one of the other second generation. So this is one of the more common breeder females of the dark line. So she's not fired up right now, but you can see how again, unfired. Unfired those Dalmatian spots kind of stand right out. Yep. And also you can kind of see how this is the second generation, so they're not going to be as dark or as prominent. But these are still, this is what's producing most of the dark line I have right now. She is currently, she looks gravid, but with, with every generation, they get more and more filled out, more dark. So how many generations have there been since you started this project a couple of years ago? I want to say I've stalled at the third generation third right generation now. we're at right so now. a lot of them have been from her that's when i've had more consistency mm -hmm. with the the dark line coming out with the dark uh, hatchlings and are you seeing that each generation gets darker and darker 
Yes. More consistent with the hatchlings coming out uh, will be will be darker. Wow. All right, so here's a couple of brand new hatchlings. They really start out dark, don't they? Yeah, you can see this one here is still in the process of shedding, so it does give some good contrast. So you can see just how dark their fresh skin, right. skin is underneath. And this one here, you can see, still has some patterning on the sides. Not sure if this one will get as dark as their clutch mate but still has that nice dark base. They really do start out dark, and this is generation three, as you mentioned. Yep. All right, so this guy just fired up on us, so I want to show you guys what he looks like fired up. Look at that, that head just pops right out. So you can see as he gets more fired up, the patterns just slowly fade away. Just fade away. And yeah, as he fires up, he gets darker. So all those little Dalmatian spots that were visible the first time we saw him have kind of melted into the background it's there. It's completely gone. It's tough letting them go and it's tough pricing when there's not much. There are a few others. There's the charcoal to base a price off of, but it's... It's not a charcoal. It's, it's, it's not a charcoal. A charcoal. It's different. Mm -hmm. And this is something that you originated. Right. So slowly but surely more people are able to get their hands on some of them. So I'm sure a lot of people just clicked on this video thinking it was clickbait and that one individual, let alone all the other ones that you have, have proved that this is, in fact, a brand new morph of Crested Gecko. You are on to something magical here, man. <laughs> well, thank you. So guys, when it comes to crested geckos and crested gecko morphs, we are just starting out to see what can be made with these incredible geckos and the living art that we can create with crested geckos. We are in its infancy, and it's pioneers like Ryan who are leading the charge when it comes to crested gecko morphs. So I'm going to put all of Ryan's links in the description below. If you're interested in this morph of crested gecko, contact Ryan, work it out with him. While you're down in that description, check out our sponsors who make Make this channel possible. So anyway guys, as always, thanks for watching and until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.